I was gonna say let's 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 actually start this. Um, if you're yeah. watching this live, if you're listening to this later, this is the Big Blues Podcast by Giants 366. We're, it's, this is our season recap episode. We're going to talk about the season as a whole, what to expect next, where the Giants are at as we start to usher in a new era era of uh, Giants football. Or new error, or new error. It could be is, error. Uh, Kevin Abrams promoted or Lewis Riddick. But yeah, that's where we're at, man. So. So let's why don't let's we kinda, start? We obviously know we obviously know that Dave Gettleman's out. I was going to say let's 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 do a timeline. I think that sure. makes the most sense, right? Let's I like that. I was I, I agree. Timeline I think by tomorrow by noon, potentially earlier, but by tomorrow by noonish, we'll have some sort of statement from the Giants that Dave Gettleman is retiring. Right, retiring again, retiring. And that'll be He's by. Not actually retiring. It'll be some point tomorrow. My expectation is that it's by lunchtime. It could be like four o'clock, but they're gonna put out some sort of notice that Dave Gettleman is retiring, and that they're gonna conduct a, a GM search. I don't expect John Mara to do some sort of press conference or anything like that. Um, I don't think they're gonna do anything before before they they go out to hire a GM. If they do, it'll be something small. I also don't think they're going to be giving Dave Gettleman some sort of podium moment either. It's going to be like no. some he doesn't statement want it. written by the giant social media team. He doesn't want it. Dave Gettleman does not want I mean, even today, the media asked him for a comment. He apparently just walked right past him, didn't say anything, which is fine. I mean, that's his right. I'm not, you know, he shouldn't have to speak if he doesn't want to. Um, but... Yeah, so so Dave Gettleman, I, and I disagree, Matt. I think they're going to do their end of year press conferences either tomorrow or Tuesday. I think Mara will speak, um, and then they'll speak again after they hire a new GM. You know, in, in, in you know within the next two weeks. So that, I, that's what I think is going to happen. I, I just to kind of continue with this, I don't think even if the Giants have already made up their mind internally, I don't think they're going to have this declaration that Joe Judge's job is safe until after a general manager is hired. Which would be, again, the smart way to do it. Because, again, otherwise, he, I, I really think Joe Judge is going to be a hard sell on a lot of on a lot of general managers. I don't think teams are going to be, or, or general managers are necessarily going to be happy um, with, with Joe Judge. So I, I, it, that's kind of what we expect to happen over the next, like, two or three days. And I think within the next 10 days, definitely in the next two weeks, we should yeah. have a either a new general manager or like where we know who the general manager is, but the Giants can't hire the guy because he's in a playoff run or something. Right. Like, something like that. Yep. So like we'll have an idea of who the next general manager will be. Like I said, if it's they're choosing to hire someone from one of these other teams that are, are in the playoffs, it might not become official until I mean could be February if, yeah. if if they're making a playoff run. But which makes things interesting with coaching hires as well because you're going to keep letting Joe Judge show up every single day until February if the new GM doesn't want him. It, it this is where <laughs> this is where like this is where it gets oh my god the Dolphins just oh. intercepted Mac Jones pick 6. Oh, um, oh that's awesome. Yeah, the Patriots are down 14 nothing. Just sorry. Um it, it, it'll make things really interesting. Make things really interesting with the whole Joe Judge situation. Um, which is why the Giants should just fire him outright today. Um, they should. Or tomorrow with Dave Gettleman on Black Monday with everyone else. But that's kind of the, the, the timeline of things. Dan, let's talk about the season. Yeah. Can we talk about the season? Because, um, because I have I – have, it's not even a hot take. Just to, just to take, I've never liked watching Giants football least, or never liked watching Giants football less than this season. I, I just, I dreaded watching this team play every week. This was worse than 2017. Oh, this was worse than 17. It was worse than 19. Um, it, there was just it, it, the worst, the absolute worst season of my life. And I've actually never felt worse about the future of the team. Than I do oh, same. Because yeah. it's, you know, back in back in 2017, the team had the second overall pick. You, you know, there was all these possibilities. They were ushering a brand new era. They fired both GM and coach, 
And granted, we didn't love the Dave Gettleman hire, but, you know, just like we'll give a majority of guys a chance at the Giants hire, we're going to give, we gave Dave Gettleman a fair, a fair shake. I mean, Gettleman, I think for us, the, the second he traded Beckham, that's when it's like he has no plan. That's when we knew he had no plan. It, it's just, the they have no cap next year. There's no, like, this thing's an easy turnaround. This is, this this could be a you have two top ten. Difficult. You have two top ten picks in the year where there's not a quarterback either. Yep, and it's gonna be a potentially uh, which is, which is difficult. Hurtful. It's gonna be a potentially really difficult, like turnaround. Like, yeah, this isn't an easy. Like, there's no there's no way around it, right? This team's not gonna be good next year. It's not like 2022. They're magically gonna be good. And in 2023, you're likely drafting a rookie quarterback. And you know how things – I mean, look at Zach Wilson, Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, and Trey Lance, right? Things are ugly. And who are all very good. They're good. I think all of them are still going to be very good, but they've all had their struggles this year. So, I mean, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like we're at a point where are the Giants going to be competing in the next two years? Probably not. No. 2024 is now the new target year, and that's kind of depressing. As a, as a fan, that, no, that's very kind depressing. of depressing. I will say, I will say, I think my, I can, I can turn it around and become excited if they announce they're firing Joe Judge, if they announce Dave Gettleman is out, they do a full yeah. house cleaning of the front office. I can now start being like, all right, I'm excited for what the future holds, but it's still in the future. Yeah. But keeping Joe Judge next year, I think that takes away all the potential fun out of next season. It like, does. I think it ruins, it sours what could be next season. Next year, it could be a building year. And not in the sense, like, it could be like what the Lions have. And listen, I don't know if Dan Campbell's the future of the Lions, uh, of their of their program. But I'll tell you what, you talk about his players playing hard. His players play hard today, and guess what? They scored 37 points today. Right? Giants, I don't think, hit 30 all year. So and, 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 you know, it's just – it's also, you know, it's a new head coach. It's going to be a new system. It's one of those things where, you know, now these head coaches and the GM can align themselves in what is a very pivotal draft where the Giants have a lot of draft capital, a lot of high draft capital. I mean, the Giants are going to have three picks in the top, what, 40? It's, yeah, it's, three picks in the top 40. You know, you're talking um, about – And then two in the top seven or eight. You know, the, 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 the Giants are going to have, you know – those three picks in the top forty, those should be pivotal pieces in your 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 you know, moving forward. Like those should be building blocks that you add to Andrew Thomas and Xavier McKin uh, McKinley, because I mean that's really all the Giants have right now to build for the future with. It, it's it's it'll be really yeah. depressing if those picks are made where Joe Judge has say in those picks and it goes by the current scheme the Giants have. So, you know, firing Joe Judge and, and really cleaning house and doing this the right way. I think me and you will, will be very excited for, for what's to come and for what the future holds. And I think, right. you know, it makes 2022 even more interesting, even if it's a bad season. Yeah, right. Even if it's a season where it's like, all right, the team sucks again, which, I, you know, I, I think is going to be likely. But at least the wheels will hopefully be in motion towards something better. And, and, and I think it also shows that the organization maybe isn't as dumb as we think it is. You know what I'm saying? If they fire – judge along with Gettleman and it's a brand new start and they get a whole new scouting department and a whole new football operations team. And, and I do think, uh, I which do is, think, which is really what's needed. I do want to, I do want to preface this by saying that like, and this just goes for, for front offices in general. Like, I don't know if the giants are going to be able to fire like Kevin Abrams tomorrow, but like right. it's one of those things where you want the, you want to, cause I mean, how, how the, how, you know, uh, 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 the front office normally works is those guys actually get l- let go of after you draft, which might sound crazy, but right, it's hard to sc- rescout an entire yeah an entire draft an entire draft class. So so like, you might be stuck with this with this front office essentially but, or Gentleman's scouts for one more, and then maybe in the spring you you change it up. But that doesn't necessarily mean that those scouts have any say into who's getting picked. It's still going to be the next GM's vision, the next coach's vision. It's just one of the situations where you might not see anyone fired until until May. But and I understand that. I'm ready for that and prepared for that. It's just you, there needs to be wholesale changes, and we have to. You know, I think in the next, it's really going to be the next ten days, right? We'll know if there's going to be wholesale changes in the next ten days. If 
You know, they're only interviewing we'll, five. Hey, four we'll know people. in the next. We'll know in the next twenty four hours. I don't necessarily think so because you know if they just announce Dave Gettleman's going to retire and the next GM is going to make the decision on Joe Judge, it might take ten to twelve days for us to, fi- to figure sure. things out. It really might. Sure, but like if they at least, but we'll know though if they say Gettleman's retiring, right? And then the judge is safe. Like they might, Mara might just explicitly say Matt the judge is safe. He might just come out and explicitly say Joe Judge is safe. In which case, we'll, we'll know that things really haven't changed. It's another half measure. And we're the Jets. Like, that's what the Jets did yeah. a couple years ago. Um, <clears throat> and no one wants to be the Jets. So, I mean, that's kind of... Nobody does. That's kind of the expectation of what things are to come. I mean, let's let's talk about some, some, some key players, Dan. I think that's maybe sure. the... the you want to you want to have the Jones talk? Let's have the Jones talk. That's 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 Let's really what it Jones. is. It's the quarterback talk. Because I think a lot of Giants fans, I, well, first and foremost, I think the fan base is pretty split. We talked about that this morning, right? It is split. I think this is the one issue. I think again, I've said most Giants fans. I think one judge fired, but I think it's about fifty fifty for Daniel Jones, and I just don't understand why. I don't understand this fan base's attachment to Daniel Jones. He's done nothing in his first three years to show you that he's a franchise, a legitimate game changing franchise quarterback. There's, he's done absolutely nothing. So I'm going to say what I think is going to happen this off season. Sure. And I think you're probably going to agree with me. And you agree, you're going to agree with this. I have a feeling the Giants. What, what will happen versus what should happen though. Yes. We want to emphasize are two different things. Yes. This, this is what I think will happen. Not what I think should happen. Um, and in a way, I'm going to be honest with you, I could I could see this playing out depending on, on who's available. This may actually be the best case scenario for the Giants. I think Daniel Jones is going to return next year. He'll play his fourth year under, I think he's, he's owed like $8 million. He's pretty cheap. Okay. They really can't cut him or anything. That's not going to save any cap space. It makes no sense to cut him. I think they will bring in a higher priced backup in like the $4 million range that will compete with him. I don't think they're going to pick up his fifth-year option, and I don't think Russell Wilson is going or Aaron Rodgers are going to be available via trade. So I don't think the Giants are going to be able to trade for a guy. I don't want the Giants to use a top-10 pick to, to, to pick, for, you know, pick any of these quarterbacks, and I don't think they will. So I do think Daniel Jones will be the starting quarterback next year, and I... I'm honestly not going to sit here and say, I don't think the next GM and the next head coach are going to be tied to him. And I think, you know, if they bring in a Marcus Mariota or an Andy Dalton or someone like that, I think halfway through the season next year, that guy might be the starter. That's the honest to God truth of how I see this thing playing out. Yeah. I don't think, I, I don't think Daniel Jones is the answer long term. Neither of us do. I, I don't think, but at the same time, I don't see a scenario where he's not the, the day one starter next year. And less yeah, Matt, quarterback I quarterback agree. available. I agree. I think if you look, I think there's a lot of comparisons between the Giants and the Bears, Matt. And if you look, right, the Bears, they completely overdrafted Trubisky. They took Trubisky over to Sean Watson and Pat Mahomes. Um, not to brag, my number one quarterback that year was Patrick Mahomes. I was one of the only ones not to brag. But anyway, um, the jot, but they, <laughs> the Bears completely overdrafted him. Trubisky, it was the same thing. You know, but Trubisky had more success than Jones. He did. Trubisky made the playoffs twice. And he also just had the better just, he just had better success just overall. He yeah, he did, right. He threw more yards. They, well, yeah. And he was honestly, a better player. I'm going to go ahead I'm going to go ahead and say this. Trubisky might be the guy that they bring in to it battle be, it out with which Jones. Which would be it would be like the Spider-Man meme at that point but, where it's just Daniel Jones and Mr. Trubisky just playing at each other. That 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 is a possibility and I just I think that's. Oh, I would most- love that. I would love just switching between the two of them week to week because it's like, oh, this one sucks, then that one sucks. There'd be like eight quarterback changes next year. It's just, you know, it's, <laughs> it's just one of those situations where, what, like, unless the Giants can trade for a guy, they shouldn't draft a guy. None of these guys are good enough to draft. Yep. Unless they can trade for someone, Daniel Jones is your best option. And it's not like, you know, there's not, it's not like there's this robust free agent QB market. Um, I I think that's what they're gonna do. I really don't. I, I don't think, and I don't want them to go like 
trading a pick for Jimmy Garoppolo or anything like that. Like no. at this point, with you know, used I, I, we've said this a million times. I think the next GM, especially if Joe Judge is forced on the next GM, they're just going to use 2022 as a rebuild year. They're going to tear it down. Yeah. It's going to get real ugly. And you know, if there's say, guys you could possibly sell to get picks, you sell them to get some picks. You know what I'm you saying? Know, like James Slayton, Bradbury, like, Blake Martinez, Darius yeah. Slayton. Um, and you kind of just go from there and you try to build with what, you know, you build with the core that you have and the core that you're starting to build this off season. And that's kind of, it's depressing. I keep saying that. It's depressing. Because Dave Gettleman really did set the franchise back five seasons. Oh, yeah. And, and, and that's literally five seasons. And that's not the more work yet. I mean, there's a lot more work that has to be done to fix it. But, yeah, I definitely think that's, I, I agree completely, Matt, with Daniel Jones. I think. The Giants would be stupid, though, if they didn't at least bring in a veteran quarterback um, to compete with Jones. I think there needs to be an open competition. I don't think that even if he's going to be the day one starter, I don't think he should be declared the day one starter. Um, and I think it should be open competition with it, with a veteran. Yep, I, I 100% agree. Um, kind of moving on the list of the quote-unquote players, and we will answer questions. There is a question. Um in, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna answer, after we have our kind of talks here, we are gonna open it up and we're gonna have just a big conversation. Guys. Yep. So we're just um, kind of have a couple points we want to hit that we'll open it up. The 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 one other real player. I mean, I think I think there's probably two other players. They're both on offense. I want to talk about the other one, Saquon Barkley. Um, yeah. What I think will happen is the Giants are going to keep him because John Mara will not let a new general manager trade him <laughs> for like a fourth round pick because. While Saquon Barkley is next year is getting paid seven million dollars in cash, he probably will make the Giants more than seven million dollars in terms of re- like revenue as a, just a player. Um, yeah. So I do not see I do not see Saquon Barkley getting traded um, this off season. I would trade Saquon Barkley. I think you also would. Yeah, trade I Saquon would. Barkley. Um, yeah, Matt. Matt, I would have traded him before this year. I, listen, you know what it is with Barkley, and I get a lot of people still like him. I don't. Um, I just think he's he's unfortunately for him, and and, and honestly, it's probably unfair. Like to, to be straight up, it's probably unfair. I've probably treated him unfairly this year. I'll admit it, but it's he's representative of just the worst, one of the worst mistakes this franchise has ever made. And I think when when I see Saquon Barkley now, I see just like the whole Dave Gettleman era summed up in this one player. And you know what, Matt? Like, I used to really like Saquon as a player, but it's clear he's not the player he used to be. And I think, you know, if the Giants could trade him, they can't cut him. They, they, he has the same, his his money's guaranteed for next year, so his cap hit, you know, it's not worth cutting him. So you might as well just keep him. But if you could trade him, I would be all in favor of getting something back from him. I really would. And I think because he's just representative of just the worst era of Josh. And I think I think the biggest concern I have with the whole Saquon thing um, is the fact that Saquon comes back next year, is healthy, and has a relatively good year, and then the Giants fool themselves into paying him twelve, thirteen million dollars a season. Yeah. And we just know that doesn't work. Like like we know for hundred percent it doesn't work. I mean, you look at you look at it. The you know the the, the Panthers came out. Um, and supposedly said they'll listen to offers for Christian McCaffrey this offseason. I mean, you look at Dallas. I think Dallas would much rather uh, <clears throat> much rather be playing uh, Tony Pollard. They, or they'd be fine with Tony Pollard and yeah. some other back over Zeke. I mean, well, let me ask you this, Matt. <clears throat> let me ask you this about the Cowboys. And, and, and you could have this argument pretty much with any running back draft. But if if the, the Cowboys took Jalen Ramsey, do you think that the Cowboys would trade Jalen Ramsey for Zeke Elliott right now? Oh, 100%. Up? One hundred percent. Yeah, they 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 absolutely would take Jalen Ramsey over Ezekiel, right? So, you know that that's just what it comes down to for running backs. And it's I think I think you it's know, just they, a matter of their shelf life is very short. And it's just a matter of, of paying them when you pay these running backs money, like they never last long enough to where the the back end of the deal is worth it. And I mean even even Derrick Henry, who's an amazing running back and probably the one running back where you could say. You know, Tennessee actually gave him like a really good deal. You know, yeah. he missed half the season this year, making twelve. And the team, by the way, still got the number one seed without him. They yep. still got the number one seed without him. And it's so just, I don't want to necessarily hear, oh, what would the Titans be without Henry? They'd be the number one seed without Derrick Henry. And it's like just we saw it happen. 
it's and you know it's just you kind of look at it. Dalvin Cook, another you know top paid back, missed a bunch of has missed you know time this year. Or if he's not missing time, he's you know he's hurt and they're playing Alexander Mattinson and Alexander Mattinson's fine. They don't lose anything by playing Mattinson over Cook. Like it's just. I don't want to have to be in a situation where we pay Saquon Barkley a lot of money. I don't think you you do either. Um, that's not a knock on Saquon. That's just the truth. Yeah, I agree. Um, third guy I want to talk about I agree. is Andrew Thomas. Yeah, let's talk about Thomas. I love Andrew Thomas. Andrew Thomas had a very good season. Um, yeah, I, he's a good player. I, and, that, and that's with, by the way, a very weak supported cast around him on the offensive line. I want to bring this up, though. I want to bring this up. I do not think, I do not think that because you have Andrew Thomas playing well on the left side of the line, that that should stop you from taking an offensive tackle. And I do not I think, I do not think that if you think that offensive tackle has more potential than Andrew Thomas, that you, you maybe don't play that guy at left tackle. Like you, you like if the Giants take Evan sure. Neal, the Giants take Evan Neal, and they think Evan Neal will be a better tackle than Andrew Thomas for the foreseeable future, which if I'm going to be honest, I think that there's a chance that all three of the tackles that will be taken in the top 10 are better than Andrew Thomas for the future. I don't think you should be like, oh, that guy's the right tackle. I think maybe you swing Thomas to the right because I think yeah. Giants fans, with how bad the line is, Giants fans have overhyped Andrew Thomas just a little bit. He had a very good year. He's in the top half of left tackles in the league, but he's not a top five guy, and I don't think he's going to be a top five guy. Yeah, but listen, Andrew Thomas, the, the point is, and I get that maybe some people, he was a fourth overall pick and stuff like that. Oh, but, you know, he's a fourth overall pick. He should be have a gold jack of a tennis. Listen, he's a very good starting offensive tackle in the league. I think there's still room for him to improve as the rest of the line gets better. So, yeah, listen, Matt, if they want to play him a right tackle, I don't care. If they take Evan Neal and they think Neal's going to be a better left tackle, that's fine. Play Neal at left tackle. But the bottom line is the Giants need to get at least three new offensive linemen. And, I, and I, I will say, this is the draft where if you're going to take an offensive lineman in the top ten and the Giants have two top ten picks. Yeah, they, they should take two of them. They should literally take Equano at five and Linder, Linderbaum at eight if, if well, that's what it comes I, I, I to. Whatever you got to do. I was going to sit here and say that like like they need to come out with one of these three tackles. Whether, yeah. whether or not they think Andrew Thomas is the left tackle of the future, they think this guy's the left tackle and Andrew Thomas is the right tackle, whatever it may be, you can solve. And I, I'm not trying to knock Thomas because Thomas is one of your bookend tackles for the yeah. future. Yeah, and, and, and Thomas is a franchise player. Yep. And I uh, like and, – and that – I. Admittedly, I like Andrew Thomas more than you do, 100%. I mean, I think uh, I think I said this last year, and I, I, I will continue saying this. To me, after seeing him play this year, I think he's maybe closer to Jake Matthews than he is to, you know, I don't know, Trent Williams, right? I Sure. It, you know, he's going to be but, he's going to be a very good he's going to be a very good tackle for a long time. I just don't know if he's going to enter that elite territory where you know, your left tackle, you normally want that elite guy. And I think there are three tackles in this class that could be elite. That was the point sure. I wanted to make. I, I, I'm um, not going to split hairs, though, of him playing left or right. We'll see what happens next year. But I will say that Evan Neal, um, Ikem Ikwanu, and Charles Cross, those are going to be three bona fide, solid. Top ten. Like, top ten, probably lock picks that tackle this year. I think if the Giants end up going at Quanu Cross or some sort of combination of that, or somehow Neil slips to five, um, which I don't think would ever happen in a million years, but if that does happen, you know, and the Giants just take two tackles, you can play one of them at guard. I mean, I, you could play some, you know, play somebody at guard. That's fine. Like I, I, I was actually going to say, um, someone brought up, do we take? The, we can go into questions now, so we'll take questions. Um, All right, so go ahead, guys. Someone, someone above. I, I, I lost it. I think his name was Jeff. Jeff asked if we should take two ta uh, offensive linemen in the top ten. I think that's definitely on the board. Yeah, it, it's it's. Listen, you take the best players available on the board, and I will say I will say this much, Matt. Prospects, I love. Probably looking at my top prospects right now. You have three edge rushers and four offensive linemen. In my top ten, probably right now. So, which is again, what do the Giants need? They need offensive linemen, and they need defensive end or edge rushers. So, a lot of your issues 
that th this team has, if they spend one pick on edge, one pick on tackle, I don't think any Giants fans should complain. And, or if they, if they spend two on edge, or you know, I, I think they got to put at least one on the offensive line. One I do of these too. Picks has to go on the offensive line. I think, and I think but, the the you know the again, there are three top ten tackles in this draft. You need to come away with one of them. Um, yeah, you do. And honest to God, if, if the Giants were to take, if Evan Neal were to fall to five and Akim Ekwanu were to fall to, to eight, right, I'd be fine with that. Akim Ekwanu played guard in, in college. He played guard he last year. Yeah. Like, you, you sit here and say, okay, I now have Andrew Thomas, who's going to be a very good tackle. I have Evan Neal, who, honest to God, Dan, let's be real, Evan Neal could be fantastic. Like, he's amazing. Evan Neal's got that gold jacket potential. And then and then you have Iki Ekwanu. He's have a 350 month. If you have, you know, you have a Kim, you know, Iki Ekwanu, who's just a great football player. If you move him the guard, I think there's a chance he's an All-Pro guard. Like, right? That's how you fix the offensive he's gonna, line. He's going to be. You guys remember the Slater debate from last year? Like, oh, is Slater a tackle? Is Slater a guard? That's going to be Ekwanu, and, and I think he he can play tackle. He can play guard. Wherever he ends up, though, he's going to be a stud. And then I also think the guy who I really like is Linderbaum, who's a center. Again, I, center, you could argue, oh, sh you shouldn't take centers in the top 10 or whatever. Who cares? Guys, have you watched the Giants team play? Take the center in the top 10 if you feel like he's the best player available. I think Linderbaum, you could absolutely justify using a top 10 pick on. And I also, you could absolutely justify it. Linderbaum is also like a very good target if the Giants are trading back into the teens as right. well. Um, uh, this is a, a, another good question, Dan. Um what do you guys think? This is this is from Mike. What do you guys think about Ojolari? Mike <coughs> went on to say, "I think he had a pretty good rookie year." Yeah, he he exceeded my expectations, but there was time for he completely. You just didn't. If you take out the Pan yeah, if you take out the Panthers game, like if you just nullify the Panthers game, his season looks a lot different than what it really was. I think he's yeah. at like he's at like five sacks. You know, I think he was at like thirty something pressures. He'd be in the twenties in pressures. It really changed that Panthers game where he beat up on. It was Carolina took a guy in the third round. I'm I'm forgetting his name. The Carolina took a, a left tackle in the third round. That's who um, Ojolari beat up on the entire game. Dan, are you looking it up? Christensen. Yeah, maybe? I'm looking it up right now. Christensen. What did you right? say? Carolina's name. Yeah, Brady Christensen. Yep. Brady Christensen. They took they took they took the tackle in the third round. Ojolari really beat up on him. Um, and that's all three sacks were against that guy. It was just it was a kind of one of those games where Jolari played fantastic, and you saw what his he, flashes of his potential. But if you remove that game, it's a lot different of a season. Um, yeah, he's. Just uh, so I'll, I'll say this: so Ojolari, he had Ojolari had three sacks in the first three games. He had two and a half against Carolina, week seven, and then after the Carolina game for the rest of the season, he only had two and a half sacks the rest of the way. Um, and again, sacks are sexy. It's not just about sacks. sacks. Um, but he's he, only he's getting really, two pressures a game. Like he's getting, he yeah. was getting two, three pressures a game. That's not a ton. Um, it's not like he was hitting the quarterback a ton either. Um, but I feel like with with him, with Ojolari, if the Giants could get an alpha pass rusher to play on the opposite side of him, he'd be a very good second. Pick. He and I think I think that's what people need to realize is he is not your Justin Tuck. He's not your Jason Pierre-Paul. He's not your Michael Strahan. He is your Osu Minora. And that's not a knock right. against Osu Minora. Osu Minora was a great no, player in his own right. And if Ojo Lare has a career like Osu Minora, I think Giants fans would be thrilled. I would be thrilled. But he's not your alpha pass rusher. He, you know, he's a guy who you're going to he's going to put his hand in the dirt. He's going to be good at pass rushing. He struggled with run with run defending this year. I will say that as well. But, you know, you need which, to Which well, which again, we knew he was going to we and, knew he was like he's a one trick. He's he's a speed rusher. That's what he is. And and I think I think the really strong start by Ojolari, you know, especially in the first like seven weeks, has a lot of Giants fans, you know, thinking that he's something that he's not. I mean, I, there were people that were arguing that he should be defensive player of the, um, defensive rookie of the year over Michael Parsons back in like October. Yeah, which is insane. like like it's, insane. he he's a good player. I think he, he's going to be a good player. You want him to take the next step in his development because if he doesn't take the next step in his development, then next year, then then it's an, well, then it's another second round pick you missed on. Yeah, it's it's like Will Hernandez. <laughs> so, it's like Will it's like Will yeah. Hernandez year year one in 2018. He had a very good year. It wasn't great. It was good, um, especially for a rookie. For a rookie, it was very good. For a regular player, it was okay. 
and you hope that he takes the next step. That's that's where we're at with Ojolari. Yeah, for sure. Matt, let's talk about Lorenzo Carter. We had a question from uh, Ricky about Lorenzo Carter. I uh, Listen, I'm personally out on Lorenzo Carter uh, unless it's a very minimum level one-year prove-it deal. But I... We do this every year. Okay, so he has like three games of productions. Three good games of production. Every year. Basically his whole career. No, no, we do this every year. Like, last like, year... Last year, he started off the season with that good game against Pittsburgh. And yep. then, like, he wasn't very good in, until he tore his Achilles, but everyone just remembered that game against Pittsburgh. Actually, like, like if you actually took his stats through the portion of the season that he played and then projected them out for the rest of the year, he actually would have had a worse year than the year before in terms of pressure, sacks, QB hits, everything like that. Um last year then obviously this year he got hurt again didn't play as much and he finished the season strong and it's like the 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 pat trana um he's like the pat trana player where like she just yeah. can't let him go and there's a portion of the fan base that just loves her positivity it, which is it's, it's it's blind positivity it, it, it seconds me it's blind positivity and like that portion of the fan base has just lo- you know Lorenzo Carter had a couple good games and the career and, and the the season off Giants need to make sure they bring him back and maybe they do that's I'm not going to complain if the Giants bring Lorenzo Carter back on a, vet- a veterans minimum contract no if it's a small deal no I won't complain either cuz at the end, it's not that big of a deal no um here's a good question from Junior we take a tackle with our pick and an edge with the Bears pick what players do you think it ends up being um so, just to do like go quickly in the order in our head, you know, Thibodeau and Hutchinson are going to be gone. Evan Neal's likely to probably be gone. one two. Neal's probably going three or something. Um, Stingley's likely gone. So yeah. if we're taking a tackle with the first pick, probably probably Ike Iguano or Akim yeah. Iguano, depending on. How, I, I would agree. Him or Cross. Him, him or Cross. I think it's going to be Iguano. I think teams are going to fall in love with the. I mean, he's just he's so athletic. He's such you, raw power. Here, here's here's the other thing about it is you've got a fail safe with him. If he sucks at tackle, just play him at guard. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a complete there's a built in fail safe with him. So you know, Equano Equano I think will be the the pick at five if we elect to take a, an offensive lineman at five. And then I think at eight, I'm gonna be honest, and I think Carl Aftis will be there at eight. I think that yeah, he probably will. And, and I. I I struggle with him because I've, I listen. <clears throat> I'm going to assume Matt that a quarterback goes in the top ten. I think so. One. I think so as well. And I think that there's going to be like I think the league and the and really the fit, like like just draft fans in general and analysts and whatnot are going to be very split on Carl Laftus. <clears throat> yeah, they will. He's a good player though. I but don't know why they'd just, be split on him. It's because he's not your prototypical. Um, speed rusher. He is a power rusher. He is a. Right. I am going to beat you with my, 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 my the use of my hands. Almost he's like six a, four, two seventy five. But he's almost like a, a like an MMA fighter or like a wrestle a wrestler where his yeah. hand placement's just so good. And I'm going to beat you with my hands and I'm going to beat you with my power. And that's how I'm going to get to the quarterback. And I think a lot of teams are going to are going to say, I don't know if I like that guy because I don't know if he you know if he's he's not that prototypical speed rusher type. And I think a lot of teams are going to be concerned, and this showed up on tape when I watched him. Um, I, was, I watched him just a couple weeks ago, watched like four or five games from him. Um, and it, I, it was something that I had watched him play. I'd watched Purdue play on TV, and I didn't notice it. Then I was, when I was just watching him, it was very clear. He has some really, really, really big concerns with his range and his length. He's, does not, his arms are not long. He struggles, yeah. struggles with setting the edge. And it's one of those things where... Like, I'm going to be honest with you, Dan. If he was a little bit longer, I'd sit here and say, he reminds me of J.J. Watt. But he's yeah. not. He's not. Like, J.J. Watt is a he little bit long and lengthy. I, I, I will say this. He does not look as athletic as, like, if you watch Aiden Hutchinson and Kayvon Thibodeau, those guys, they look extremely athletic. He, he kind of almost looks like, not to be mean, but kind of like that, like, that, like, you ever, like, played in real sports and there's a guy who's out there, you know, he doesn't really look like he's in shape, but then he ends up being pretty good? That's kind of more like what Carl, Carl Lafayette looks like when he plays. And maybe it's because he went to Purdue and Purdue's just kind of a lame school, but... 
I just I don't, I, I don't the, like there are a lot of things that like you know if if I could sit here and say okay yeah he'll improve on his finesse pass rushing moves like you can you can improve on those things his hand placements already elite um, like those his power is already elite um, you can't make his arms longer no you can't like you can't no you can't make his arms longer his arms are as long as they're gonna be um, and because of that I think there's a chance over the next couple months. Um, that Jermaine Johnson out of FSU rises and becomes that third edge. Yeah. I think I, I, mm-hmm. I, I think we're going to see, like, especially, you know, he's going to go to the college. You're very high on Jermaine. I am. I actually think, uh, uh, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me rephrase that, because I think it could be Jermaine Johnson, and I think it could be David Ajobo. Yeah, I was going to say, Ajobo is going to be a top 15 pick. And I, I think, I think People can be, say whatever they want. Ajobo, dude, he's a beast. He's going to be a top 15 pick. I think it's going to be one of those two guys. It, I, I think is going to overtake Carl Laftis. And, I, and I'll go ahead and say this. I, at this point, would not be mad with Carl Laftis at eight, but I also would not be mad with Jermaine Johnson at eight, and I would not be mad with David Ajobo at eight. So the Giants have plenty yeah. of options if they want to wait until eight for an edge rusher. Yeah, Ajabo is... Uh, I, again, watch David Ajabo. It's going to be one of those things where Carl Laftis thinks is going to fall because people are going to realize at the combine that he's not, a, he's not really that athletic. Ajobo is an athletic freak. I think he's probably more athletic than Thibodeau yeah, watch, and Hutchinson. Watch the spin move Ajabo put on uh, in, in Georgia. He did this spin move on a guy where he he faked like he was going to make you know like a power, like a swim move inside, and then he pulled this spin move on the Georgia tackle. It was just lightning and, quick. You can't teach it. And on top of that, I'm also just going to go ahead and say this too: the if the Giants wanted to wait until round two. There are some really good round two prospects um, at edge the Giants could take. There's that um, NRB or Enger B guy from, uh, I think, South Carolina. And then there's Trayvon Walker out of Georgia, who's really good. Um, which Trayvon Walker is like 6'4", 270, and he like is able to cover guys. Like He was good in coverage this year. Like Moves like N'Kobe Dean um, sometimes when he's out there, which is kind of nuts. So, I mean, there are, like, the Giants should be able to pick a really good offensive lineman and a really good edge rusher with two of their top 40 picks. Yeah, and, and ideally, honestly, Matt, with just how this draft is, if you spent your first three picks, which are all going to be, what, in the top? Um, 37? Right now, it should be the top 37, wouldn't be, it? should be in the top 37. And the Giants, right now, it'll be 35. As of right now, Matt, they have the 35th pick. So they have the Fourth, pick, oh well, that's good, subject to change because yeah, so it'll be in the top 40, thirty-seven. Yeah. So, because right now we're recording during the during the four PM games, but yeah, if, if they get that, man, if they just take two linemen and an edge, I would be thrilled. Yep. Two offensive linemen and an edge, that's a win-win in my book. And listen, you can say, oh, the team needs everything, so you could argue taking other positions, but you, you somebody's got to come in and build this lineup. Like I'm done watching. I I don't want the line to be an excuse next year. I don't. So figure it out. All right. This is this draft is not a like a skill position draft. This is a trenches draft. Your best players are going to be in the trenches. Yes, there's a couple of good receivers, but there's a there's some good corners too. But go and get your edge rushers. Finally get it. Go and get your linemen. Finally get the trenches set up. That was a that was a long winded answer to should two offensive linemen be taken in the top ten. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going back. I had a couple other questions here. Um, are there any good linebackers this year? I think there's, um, there's, considering there's two. By passing in, in Carson's. Who, who, do you, who are your top – you're talking interior linebackers. Who are there, your top there are, there are, I think there are two that are going to go in the first round. I just don't think sure. – I think based on where the Giants are picking, they're going to go after where the Giants pick and then before yeah, the Giants I don't, pick again. And I don't think they should take any of these guys uh, in the top six. I think I know who you're going to it's, say. It's Lloyd and Dean. Yeah. Right. And I would rather wait until the second or third round. I, I don't think really you should take – look at interior linebacker until the third round this year. Um, but and if there, you got a guy like there's good Henry depth. Tutu or Damone Clark, those would be my picks in the second or third round. I was going to say there's yeah. really good depth for, for the interior linebacker there spot. There is. And there's also, Tutu's a good player from Bama. There's also, He's a little bit small. There's also the possibility that, you know – the Giants just roll it back with Blake Martinez and, you know, take Crowder is not good, but he's not terrible. Um, yeah. And, or you sign that, a street free agent. You shouldn't. 
Premium it, position. Interior linebacker is not a premium. Position. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think so. I think it's one of those situations where you know, like last year, Washington took Jared Davis, who honestly did not have that good of a season, but they took Jared Davis, and um, you know, uh, I, they already had edge set up. So they, it's, right. you know, it's one of those situations where the Giants, I think, need the, you know, if I'm making a board. And Nakobe Dean and you know Jermaine Johnson have the same grade. You got to take Jermaine Johnson. So right, hundred percent. It just has to do with positional value, which is just a concept that Dave Gettleman never understood. But I, the Giants. I mean, listen, the Bears losing today was huge because uh, listen, at halftime we were worried. Like we we're like, man, this pick could drop down to twelve. But now you're really looking at getting just some absolute studs, man. And, it, and, and, and you're looking to get some absolute studs for the people there. watching live. This is relevant. Obviously, if you're listening to this later today or tomorrow, Seattle did just take the lead over Arizona. There we go. So that would bump the Bears Good. pick up to seven. So yeah, you're talking. You're looking at two top seven picks. Those should be franchise altering picks. Yep. And I think the way you, with how this team is set up, where there's no quarterback in this draft, right? The way you alter this franchise is you go and get an offensive lineman. You go and get. Um, you go and get edge rushers. Matt, uh, before we let these these fine folks go here, we had a question from Peter, I believe it was, who said, how do we get this team out of cap trouble? What is the move here? Is there any hope to even get the team out of cap trouble next year? I don't... So, I'm going to go ahead and say that, you know, I think you kind of live with with what 22, 2022 is, and you say that 2022 is the team's not going to be very good. Um, it's going to be a building year. And you do one of two things, right? The guys that you can cut post June first and, and kind of save some cap, you, you do that. And I think the big one's going to be Sterling Shepard. Like the Giants are going to cut Sterling Shepard post June first. They're going to save like eight million dollars or something this year. Um, and that's what you're going to use to sign like your rookie class. Like that's that's how you're going to get money to sign your rookie class. Um, and then after you know after that, it's it's one of those situations where it's like. You know, you can't get rid of Kenny Galladay this year. You can't get rid of Leonard Williams this year. You can't get rid of Logan Ryan anymore this year. You can't get rid of Adoree Jackson this year. Like, all those big contracts that they signed, you're going to live with them for a season, and you're going to let those guys play another year on this team. And, you know, after they play another year on this team, you'll probably end up cutting Kenny Galladay in 2023. You know, maybe you don't cut Leonard Williams and Adoree Jackson because they're playing all right. But I... Don't think there's a, an easy answer of we're just going to get out of cap space. And I don't think the next GM is going to come in and say, I'm going to push millions upon millions of dollars in the future years of my first year. I think it's just a situation where you, you know, there's you're, they're going to be able to clear enough space to get in that 20, 30 million range. And that's what you got. And that's what you'll live with. There's not going to be some big free agent spending spree this year. Yeah, for sure. But I think the obvious ones you cut sold are. Well, Solder's um, a void get deal. Shep. Solder's a void deal. Yeah. He's going to be a free agent. He actually is going to be on the books this year for $4 million. Um, Next year? Yep. 2022. <laughs> so uh, you, you cut Shepard. I think there's a good chance they end up trading James Bradbury. Um, and you, yep. that saves you like $9 million. I think there's a chance they could trade Blake Martinez. That would, would also 9. save 9.7 million, yep. That would also save you quite a bit. Um, 5.5, I believe. Well, it depends on when you trade them as well. Because um, teams True. don't have to be salary cap, cap compliant during the offseason. So that's also something to remember. Um, it, it's it, They're going to have to do some, some cap gymnastics, um, potentially, if they want to, if they, there is a big free agent they want to sign, or if they want to go grab a quarterback. But I don't think they're going to do that. Like, the Lions didn't go out and it sign It doesn't any, make sense to you know, the Lions didn't go out and sign any big free agents. And, the, you know, the Texans didn't go out and sign. Like, like that's that's where we're at. We're a, a bottom five franchise. Doesn't make any sense to make a splash free agent signing. Yeah. Wait until 2023 when this team's just in better financial standing. Um, use, use 22. Again, short-term pain, long-term gain. I would trade one more bad year, Matt, to be good for the next time. Yep. I would. And, and I think... We've gone through this much hell. If you nail these top three picks in the draft this year, and you're and you're looking at you get you know three more solid starters on rookie deals um, at premium positions like offensive line and edge, then you know when it's all said and done, 
this team could eventually be and competitive I, again. I, the other thing I want to also bring up is the fact that, like, if they do go and trade for, like, Russell Wilson, it, 2022 might still be ugly. Like, like it, it, everything they're going to do this offseason should be to build for 2023 and beyond. Um, yep. And I think that's what a GM is going to come in and say, which is why it does not make sense to keep Joe Judge. Um, it kind of circles back to that, right? Because everything they're going to do is going to be about – should be about 2023. It, it should. I completely agree. And, um, you know, I, I, I think being short-sighted is how you got in this mess. Um, but I still am just hopeful that there's wholesale changes made and that this team can get back to a point of um, – at least just being not totally miserable to watch. Like, can we at least get to a point, Matt, where we're fun bad? I know. Like, can we at least be fun bad? Can like, we at least lose games? Like, remember that 2014 team, Matt? Like, we were we were bad, but we lost games. Like, didn't we lose a game that you're like 52 to 49 or when, something like when, that? When, when and like you, there was the Carolina jo- Panthers game where Josh Norman, where the game was like in like the both teams scored in the 30s, and that game was real yeah, close. Yeah, where Odell tried to decapitate Josh. Y- yeah, Norman. like 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 that's the like, and I think like well, that was 15. I'm gonna go was. ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and say it like. The Lions this year, as bad as they were, had a lot of really fun games. They did, even today. Like they, the Lions dropped thirty-seven points today. Like as bad as they were, the Lions had a lot of very close games. Those, are like, like that's the kind of thing progress you want to see next year. Which I know sounds terrible. The Lions only won like what three games, but three games. Like that's they the, also tied again. They did. I mean, they were barely, they were <laughs> barely, they were barely worse record-wise than the Giants in a better division. Um, yeah. But it's one of those things where you kind of sit here and you say, like, you know, the Giants were just awful. Like, by the end of the year, this was the worst team in football. Um, And, Mm -hmm. you know, if next year is a year where we, you know, it's a building year and we lose fun games, you take it and you're you're happy for the future because it's really all about 2023, which is painful. It is. It is painful, and it hurts to say, but that's where it's at. Matt, um... Opponents for next year. So we have a pretty good idea, Matt, of who our opponents are going to be for next year now at this time. Granted, they are subject to change, I believe, based on a couple of um, things. So we know we're guaranteed we're playing um, the NFC North. We are guaranteed to play them. Our home games in that division are the Bears and the Lions. The away games in that division are the Vikings and the Packers. We're guaranteed to play the AFC South. Um, our home games there are the Texans and the Colts. Our away games there are the Titans and the Jaguars. But the three games that are up in the air, so the NFC does have the extra home game next year. So we'll get a home game against the NFC North, which is going to be, drum roll please, drum roll please. The Chicago Bears. Probably the – no, oh, the, sorry, the, 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 the AFC North. You said the, I thought you said AFC the NFC North. North. Okay, AFC North. I probably did by accident. It's going to be the Ravens. It's gonna, is it the Ravens? Yeah, so that sucks. That sucks. Uh, it, the Ravens, the Ravens got gonna last be, place. Did they? Well, they got last place because the Browns wanted. The Ravens are gonna have a so, cupcake schedule next year and end up like winning the AFC. They, they probably will. They probably will because I mean, no team had worse injury luck this year than the Ravens. Um, we are NFC West opponent. We know that's already gonna be the, the Seattle Seahawks. So that's going to be a road game. So going to, so basically next year we have to go to host the Ravens who are probably going to be like the best team in the AFC next year. Maybe not the best team, but one of the better teams in the AFC. We have to go to Seattle. That's a, that's really truly an impossible place to play. And then our NFC South opponent is going to be Carolina. So we know that for a fact. They're locked into last place. That actually could be a good game. So that's our schedule. That, those are our opponents next year. So locked in as of now. Yep, and I, I, I really would have liked to play Cleveland next year, not Baltimore. I was gonna say, I think, I think that's that's that that's final, right? That, nothing can change. It probably won't. Um, funny, Ricky said Russell Wilson, Giants quarterback Russell Wilson, will get to play his old team next year. Uh, we'll back see. in Seattle. I don't <laughs> think I don't unless Russell Wilson really uh, forces his hand. I don't think he's gonna be gone. So. Yep. Stan says Bishop Sycamore week one at MetLife. 
We want Honestly, Bama. though, I don't know if we think they should be sick of more right now. We What's want, that? We want Bama. We want Bama. Week one, Bama. The Chick-fil-A kickoff game in Atlanta. New York Giants versus Alabama, Labor Day weekend. Sign me up. That's Sign the other thing. Up. I'm going to go ahead and just say it right now as well. I NFL season should start Labor Day. Week 18 it being should. the second week of January. I hate it. Yeah. I hate it. it. Dude, this sucks. Like, I'm not complaining because it's extra football and stuff like that, but it's like my body clock. It, it, it's adjusted to the point where it's like, yeah, New Year's weekend. That is the last weekend of the NFL. Like, and the fact and, of the matter is that maybe this would be better if like the slate of games were better and there were more like elimination games and chaos. There, there hasn't been enough. I, I think they should start on Labor Day, and then I think they should. Th- the th- issue though is that people travel that weekend, and college football starts that weekend. So that's oh, kind of I, I, I understand. I understand. I understand that they're doing it. Like, I understand why the NFL is doing it. It's all about money. Yeah. But I don't like it. Yeah. It, it definitely, definitely is there. All right, I got one more bonus question. Georgia versus Alabama, Matt. Who do you have? Oh, it's going to be Bama. You think Bama is going to roll? I'm going to go against the Green. I'm, I'm picking Georgia, man. Actually, the one the one player I think everyone should watch tomorrow is George Pickens, Georgia wide receiver. Mm. I think people okay. should watch him. I think there's a. I think it sounds like he's going to declare for the draft, um, even though he didn't play all year because he tore his ACL in the spring. He just came back for the playoff game, um, like he played in the, the last playoff game against Michigan. Um, and I, a lot of people thought that he was the best wide receiver in the nation heading into this year, but then he didn't play because he tore his ACL in the spring. If he were to declare for the draft, I think there's a very good chance he's like a, a top 40, top 50 player, and he's a second-round pick. Yeah. People should pay attention to him. He's a very good football player. I agree. George Pickens is solid. I'll give you guys a couple of names to watch to, for tomorrow's draft <laughs> or, or for tomorrow's game. Watch Evan Neal if you want to be sold. Jamison Williams is my wide receiver one. Yep. Jamison Williams is my wide receiver one. Um, I have no issue saying that. The guy's going to be an absolute beast. Um, and then why, why don't you go ahead and watch N- Nicole Dean. And then go ahead and watch the edge rusher or defensive end, Trayvon Walker as well. Yep. So Actually, watch Trayvon Walker and watch how well he moves for someone that's like six foot four, two seventy. It's nuts. Yeah. It's nuts. Um, I like it, but I'll definitely be watching the. There's, there's the actually, game there's probably what, there's what, five or six top forty picks in the game tomorrow. There's a lot. Trayvon. Well, let's go through real Evan, quick. Evan, there's Evan Neal, Evan Neal, Jameson Williams. Yep. Um, Nicobe Dean. Nicobe Jordan Dean. Davis is probably going to be a top forty pick. Jordan Davis, uh, uh, Trayvon Walker probably. Will Trayvon be a top Walker 40 pick. and say Pickens. I don't so that's know. Six. Pickens might be if he declares. It really Pickens. He's, no, Matt. He's going to be. He's going to be. So he's going to be. That's quite a bit. And then there's. Game. Then you never know. There could be some guys like you know, Christian Harris might sneak in. John Mechie could sneak into the top forty. You never know. So just kind of depends on. It's guys it's play. crazy how good Georgia and Bama are. You can literally watch that entire game, and on both offense and defense on each team, you're watching future NFL players play. That could be a New York Giants next year. Next year, so it's yeah. it's crazy too that Alabama lost so many guys last year. They lost Mac Jones, Devontae Smith, <laughs> Henry, uh, not Henry Ruggs, uh, Jalen Waddle. Like they lost all these players last Najee year. Najee Harris. Yeah, there's Najee Harris, right? And they're still just so much better than the rest of the competition. It's just crazy. Yep, it's definitely one of those games, guys. Again, watch watch the game tomorrow. It's fun. College football is fun, and it's also just also fun for the, for the draft because, like I said, there's so many prospects in the game tomorrow. Um, for ESPN sure. Should be well, listen, Matt. Matt, why don't we? Why don't we? How about this? Why don't we make a pack? And this is live, so this we might you, it might not work, but if they end up moving Gettleman out tomorrow or meeting with the press tomorrow, depending on what the Giants do, why don't we? Um, Plan to go live maybe before the college football playoff game tomorrow night. Either before uh, the college football playoff game, maybe at halftime. Yeah, or, or during it even. I, don't, I mean, I'll, I'll go live on it. We can watch the game. We can all watch the game together. Um, 
and go from there. So we can kind of talk about it. Because if, if you're watching, I'm watching. We could always go live even during the game. I have no issue doing that. Um, and we could just kind of recap the day for the Giants. We're, we plan on being live more often than normal this week, I would think, just considering – uh, what's the it's, stake for the Giants? I, not here? just more, not just this week, but I think the next couple of weeks, it's going to be a yeah. There's going to be a pretty. You it's it's going to be a lot. And then as we transition to free agency season, draft season, we're going to try to do one show a week for drafts. Right, Matt? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I think I know I, Matt's life is hell during this time of year. I but I I think I think what's probably going to happen, guys, over the next couple of weeks, you're going to see me and Dan a lot. We'll probably yeah. fade fade the black a little bit. Because uh, nothing really is going to happen in the end of January, early February. Combines, late February, you'll probably see us around then. Probably see us around free agency in, in the middle of March. And then that's probably from free agency till the draft. You'll see a bunch of us as we we kind of highlight the yeah. offseason and get ready for the draft. One thing we did not do last year, Dan, that I think we're going to do this year, um, is I think we're going to do, be doing some uh, uh, live mock drafts. So we can use yes, like, the draft Yes, we're going to do more live mocks. We're going to have the, I mean, listen, with us having a five, the pick five and eight, just the draft coverage. This is like, because I think for some of you, we've kind of become the draft page and I'm fine being the draft guys. I love the draft, but the possibilities are endless. <laughs> the possibilities are truly endless. Um, So it's going to be fun. And we'll obviously have our ears to the grindstone. It's going to be a fun off season. I'm actually more excited for the off season. Um, then I am <laughs> really for so once we started going on three, I'm like, all right, we're kind of drastic. I knew the season. Yep. And I, it's one of those, we'll be watching our films. We'll be having our, our, our big boards. Yeah. Um, I'll give you my whole we'll, top 50 again. I was going to say, we'll actually, we'll actually probably have a mock draft out. I think we the f- mock draft 1.0 next week. Um, next, yeah. We're going to drop it next Monday. It'll be next mock Monday. Just, you know, after the first playoff games are played, we'll actually, there's a Monday Night Football game next Monday. Yeah, there is. Um, there but is. We'll so maybe we'll do mock, Tuesday. We'll have a mock. We'll, we'll have a mock draft out when the draft order is pretty much set, minus the you know the remaining playoff teams, and you know it's it's officially draft season. Draft season starts. Now. It's draft season. It's off season. But you know what season is for Dave Gettleman, Matt? It is Cape Cod season. <laughs> and the wretched Dave Gettleman and Matt. These shirts they did great for us. We sold a lot of these shirts. Um, we did it, guys. Thank you for those of you who bought a shirt. Thanks for those who got us Christmas gift, birthday gifts for your family and friends. Um, we hope they enjoyed them. And we really hope you guys enjoyed our content this year. We know the season well, sucked. It's not but we just, hope that maybe we were a bright part of it. Uh, as we sit here and say, we hope you, hope you enjoyed our, our content this season. Like, it's it's not over. Like like we just said, you're going to be hearing a lot from us over the next, especially right, the next obviously. weeks. And then moving forward, um, you know, what, you never know with the Giants, man. Sometimes it, it could be February and we could end up being really active because some, some dumb stuff happened or some yeah. dumb stuff happened. But, um, but yeah, it's... Yeah, Logan Ryan makes a comment about, like, the Tennessee Titans fan base after they win the Super Bowl or something like that. You know, you never... So. Or yeah, you don't. <laughs> you don't know. But point being is this dreadful season's over. The Dave Gettleman era era is over. Hopefully, the Joe Judge era is also over. It, that'll be to be determined. And I think we have a uh, we have a very interesting like next couple of weeks, potentially month of Giants football before like the real off season kicks in and like. February, like middle of February rolls around and there's just like nothing for a month. Yep. And it's the misery and the pain of not having football. Listen guys. Yeah. But yeah. Well, thank you guys so much for tuning in. We really do appreciate it. And uh, we'll be right where with you guys updating everything as it comes um, over the next, you know, week or so and next few weeks and just make sure you're doing that. And by the way, we're only a few likes away from 20,000 followers. So invite your friends to like the page if you haven't. All right. Uh, and I mean, just one more thing, close off the show, fire Joe judge, fire Joe judge. Yes. We know Gettleman's gone before. So I, I didn't. Uh-huh.